Yes. Okay. All right. So I'd like to begin by asking everybody a very simple question. What is your identity? Now, we can answer this question in a few different ways. Firstly, through our name. So good evening. My name is Yang. It is not Yang. It is not Yang. And it's most definitely not Yi Han. Ah. <laughs> yes, okay. Ah. <laughs> yep, okay. Yep, so basically, it's very important that this is it because this is your identity now, isn't it? And so, apart from this, what else might constitute our identity? Well, our identity might also. Where is it? Not working. Okay, yeah, sorry. Very good, please. Okay, so uh, our identity might also consist of what age we are in. So for me, I am currently a year five because I am terrible at this thing called graduation. And contrary to popular belief, I am actually only a single major psychology undergraduate. Yep, so um, the big important question that then I'd like to ask all of you is that of, is this who you really want to be? This is a very important question because if our identity is not who we want to be. Now, that's going to cause us a bit of a problem now, isn't it? Imagine lying on your deathbed and reflecting on your life decisions, and you realize that the person that you grew up to be is not who you wanted to be. Now, wouldn't that just suck? So, one way that we can potentially circumvent this possible scenario is if we ask ourselves a third and very important question, which is simply, what do we value? And this is important, because based on what we value, that shapes who we want to be. And likewise, if we take actions that are aligned with what we value, it allows us to forge our identity. And so likewise, like many people here, we all might value very different things. So what might we value? Well, it's important to see that what you personally fundamentally value might be very, very different from what the person sitting next to you values. And so, just like how it's important for us to make sure that our name is not misidentified, it's likewise important for you to make sure that you do not misidentify what your fundamental values are. Because this can be very different from the person sitting next to you, or from your friends, or from your family. And then the fourth question that we need to ask ourselves after we figure out what our fundamental values are is, are we living life according to what we value? Now, many of us will say, you know, we have a lot of time. We're still in university. We're young. What? I, I, if I'm, I'm not going to die today, if anything unfortunate ever happens, it will probably only happen to somebody else. But what if I told you that that somebody else was not just someone that you knew, but someone who was much younger than you? When I was 10 years old, I had the unfortunate circumstance of having to attend my younger cousin's funeral. He was only a tender age of four years old when he passed away due to very unfortunate circumstances. And it really hit me because I realized that if he could go, I could go. And if I could go, perhaps maybe it's really time for me to sit down and reflect on my life and really think about what I fundamentally value. And so that got me started down the path of asking questions to really figure out who I am and to find myself. And so I really decided to sit down and think through all the many values that I might actually value. And after asking myself questions nonstop and taking, spending 10 minutes a day every day to really reflect and think and question myself what I really value, I eventually realized that I value knowledge. So, okay, why do I value knowledge? Well, that's because it allows me to understand different concepts. Okay, so why is it important for me to understand different concepts? Well, that is simply because it allows me to link ideas and express myself. And then I ask myself this question, okay, so this is important to you, but why is that the case? And when I thought about it a bit more, well, it's simply because if I can understand and link concepts from different fields together and be able to express myself, I can then engage with a larger pool of audience and talk to more different kinds of people. I was like, okay, cool, but why is that important to you? And so 
after I thought about it even more, I realized that I see every single human interaction as a mirror that reflects a portion of your true self back at you. Because based on how you interact, based on what you notice about your interactions, and based on what you think about what you notice and how you interact, you realize just a little bit more about who you really are. And this got me to realize that my fundamental drive was really for me to find myself. And so this would not have been able to be possible if I didn't take that time to really sit down and introspect and really figure out what I really valued in life. So let's ask ourselves some questions. Why are we in university? Now this probably might be a bit more applicable to everybody here. So maybe the most common reason that many people like to say that they are in university for is simply because they want a job. And so why do you want a job? Well, that is for you to obtain financial stability. Seems quite obvious, right? Since you get a job, you get money. Okay, let's go into a bit, a bit deeper. Why do you want financial stability? Well, it may be because you do not want to rely on your parents. And if you think about it even more deeply and ask yourself, why do you not want to rely on your parents? You might actually just realize that the fundamental reason why you're actually in university is simply because you want to be independent. So let's apply the same framework to why I am in university. Well, if we start off with, the reason why I'm in university is because I want to gain knowledge. And this is important to me because if I want to gain knowledge, I need this knowledge to be able to get to practice psychology and to eventually get a master's. And I will not be able to get this knowledge if I'm not in university. And so then I ask myself, okay, why is it important for you to get a master's and to practice clinical psychology? Well, if you think about it, what you may not tell your friends, the person sitting next to you, or your parents, you would most likely tell a psychologist because you're seeking their help in order to maybe help you solve a problem that you're facing. And so as a clinical psychologist, I get a very, very personal level of interaction with the people I meet, which is very important to me because this once again goes back to the fundamental value of me wanting to really understand who I really am. And so this is very important because now that I understand how university fits in within my entire life, I can make conscious changes that will allow me to, yeah, that will, uh, that I can make conscious changes that will allow me to really maximize and be, make, take actions that are aligned with what I value. So what have I done in university? Well, the first thing that I've done is that I've actually decided to overload every semester. So for the entire time, I've always been overloading at least six modules every semester. And let me tell you something, overloading is great. It's fantastic. You don't understand, you don't, you don't see the picture. Let me give you this alternate perspective. So let's say you pay $4,000 every semester for five courses. So every course ends up being 800 bucks. And if you increase that number to six courses per year, semester, suddenly you're getting a discounted rate of $660 per module. And so not only are you actually paying less for the same amount of knowledge, you're get, actually getting a greater amount of knowledge within the exact same time frame, which is great because that means you're basically getting even more value for your money from NUS. And the best part is, because you're in NUS, your lectures are kind of like a captive audience which have no choice but to answer the questions that you badger them with. So why not make the most of your money, pester your, uh, your professors, and take more modules? So that was why I thought about it, because this is completely in line with my personal fundamental value of getting knowledge. And additionally, I also decided to take three languages because if I can talk to more people, this once again goes back to my fundamental drive of being able to talk to more people and have more human interaction. And so this is completely aligned with what my values are. But of course, you all may say, you know, this is not very relatable. I mean, I may just be this really enthusiastic nerd who likes to study. So what happens if you don't know what you value? And here's where I'd like to bring a good friend of mine who did not really know what she valued when she first entered university. So when she first entered university, she decided to enter into science. And after thinking about it for a while, she said, nee, science is not for me, I'm gonna switch to arts. And so she went to arts, and not only did she go to arts, she decided to try psychology. 
And after staying in psychology for a while, she said, oh, okay, it's still not ready for me. I'm going to go and sample literature. And it was only at the end of year two, Sam two, that she finally decided to settle on social work. And this person is none other than Valley Pua, who is an ex-alumni from Tabusa College, and is a fantastic person because now she's not only en doubly enjoying her major, but she's actually working in conjunct consulting and helping people who really are in need. And this is completely, once again, in line with what she fundamentally values. And so the key point here is that it's very important for you to have the courage to take that first step to make changes. Because firstly, if you know what you value, if you make these changes, it can really act as a propelling springboard to get you to who you want to be. And secondly, if you do not know what you value, making changes allows you to get information and you can then introspect and reflect on what you think and feel about that information to see whether this is really in line with what you fundamentally value. But the bottom line is that if you do not take the courage to go against the norm and step out to really make changes in your life, you'll not be, getting, you'll not be able to rip the benefits of any of these choices. And so the next important point is that because if we are able to make changes that are more aligned with what we value, it will perhaps allow us to maybe just become who we really want to be so that we can live a bit more happily with ourselves. And not just uh, for us being able to obtain that eventual identity that we want, and so therefore being able to be happy with ourselves at that end state, if we understand what our core fundamental values are, as well as what actions we can take, we can actually then maybe make actions to make the process of getting to our eventual identity a more enjoyable one. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, let's go back to the previous example of how we might fundamentally want to be independent. So let's think about another way of potentially being independent. What would you actually need to be independent? Well, firstly, you might actually need survival skills. Okay, so, so how do I get these survival skills? I could maybe start doing chores myself. And what is one way that I can force myself to do chores by myself? Well, that is potentially through living separately from my parents which might be the very reason why we are currently living inside university, away from our parents, because this allows us to really be who we want to be by allowing us to become independent and say that, okay, I can take care of myself, I do not need my parents. And these are small little steps that you can take along your life journey that are aligned with what you fundamentally value, which can just make your life just a bit happier. So if you can do this, why not? And so what I've really covered today is three very, very simple core things that you can actually do. Starting with the very first step of being able to find yourself. And after that, we then stress the need for you to make changes. And lastly, it's very important for us to live happily. And if you cannot remember all of this, just remember the first letter of everything. Because it's especially through these moments where we go FML that we really need to take that time to think about what we really value, what changes we really want to make in our lives so that we can actually live happily. And I'm sure a lot of you might say, you know, life is not really a bed of roses. What happens if you face consecutive setbacks? Well, I'd like to close by ending with a very simple story of a four-year setback that I personally faced. And so, when I first entered university, I always knew that I wanted to be a clinical psychologist. And one important component of being able to become a clinical psychologist was to be able to get clinical exposure so that you can practice clinically. And for me, I was like, okay, sure, time to maybe apply to a few different organizations and see whether I could get that clinical exposure. And so in year one, I enthusiastically went to apply to a lot of different places and got rejected. And then I was like, okay, so maybe that might just be because I'm a bit inexperienced. Let's continue studying and maybe apply next year. So I did that, and in year two, I applied again. And I got rejected. And it happened again in year three, and it happened again in year four. But the thing is that in year five, something special happened. So I was actually taking a uh, psychology module with one of my favorite professors, and after class, I would go up and talk to him because I was very curious about the um, subjects and concepts that he was teaching. And we would spend 
almost easily about more than 10 to 20 minutes after class just discussing many different issues and linking concepts across psychology. And I would not have been able to do this if I did not understand that I really valued knowledge. I did not make the changes to overload every semester so that I could pool concepts from all different domains of psychology and engage in this discussion with my professor. And it was really through this discussion with my professor that he allowed me to rope me in into an attachment which I currently am at with IMH, where currently now I'm helping to facilitate group therapy, I'm helping to observe clients, and I'm also helping to design better systems to improve treatment inside Singapore. And this would all have not been possible if I decided to not stick to my guns and not continue with what I really valued. So what I'm trying to say here is that even in the face of setbacks, it's very important for us to make sure that we continue to persevere. Because down in the road in the future, you never really know when that opportunity might come. And that opportunity might only be open if you had really stuck to what you valued and continued to persevere no matter what. And so the fundamental message that I would really like to leave everybody here with today is that in this crazy adventure that we call life, it is very important that we find ourselves and understand our fundamental values because these values will act as a lighthouse that will not only guide our actions, give us the courage to take the path less traveled, but also to make sure that the identity that we eventually forge for ourselves is really who we want to be. Thank you.